Hey guys, in today's video, it's gonna be just a little bit different. Today, we're gonna to talk about what gun you should buy for a concealed carry. If you're new to us, I am Brian from Impact Defense. I am a certified hand-to-hand -hand self defense instructor. I am also a certified firearms instructor and I'm also a concealed carry permit instructor. So I am constantly getting questions like, hey, I'm looking for a gun for concealed carry. What do you think is the best one to buy? Okay, we're gonna look at this maybe a little different than some others do. If you are buying a gun for concealed carry, then let's go ahead and assume that down the road, you will probably buy something different. Now it could be because of a different size or something like that. So what we wanna do is actually look at a line that you might like or a brand that you might like. Different brands of guns have different feels. And we're gonna talk about the guns first that are on the table here for a moment. My very first purchase of a gun was actually a high point nine millimeter. Now, one of two things are happening right now. You are either probably laughing hysterically or you are going like, yes, High Point. High Point is one of those companies that is extremely polarizing. It's a love them or hate them kind of thing. Uh, I will tell you right now, I'm not really a fan, but I was fooled in the moment and told, oh, but it's made just like a Glock. I know. Go ahead and laugh amongst yourselves for the moment. Good? Okay. So anyway, here's the thing about High Points. If you have a good high point, I'm shocked at how good they can be. But if you have not a good high point, it is horrible. I, I know this because my brother was actually the first one to get a high point and then I bought one shortly after that. Actually, both of ours were very good. Our father bought one and it was horrendous. Um, I had some other people that bought one. My brother bought another one. All of those were horrendous. We just kind of got lucky in the fact that the two that we purchased were pretty much the way people said they were. What you have a lot of times with high points is double feeds, failure to feeds. Uh, just, it's just not reliable overall as a brand. Now again, if you have one of the good ones, it's a real good one. But I do not suggest it, and especially for concealed carry, because I mean, that's a very, very heavy and bulky gun for concealed carry, especially when you consider that these things only carry about eight rounds. Now, while we're in the smaller round count, uh, let's think about the smaller little pocket guns. This one is a Ruger LCP. I am not a huge fan of pocket guns, mainly because they are less accurate over distance. And I realize, okay, I, I teach self-defense and we, we talk about the distances with gun stuff is usually very, very close in. So I understand that that can be negated a little bit, but still not my favorite, but I understand there is a use case to these. If, if you just know you're not gonna carry anything else, anything bigger, then this is better than nothing. This would be a, a decent choice if you are looking for something that is going to be really, really small and something you can just slide in your pocket. Most brands have some version of pocket guns. It's not my favorite, but as you move forward, if that's the type of gun that you're gonna carry and that you will actually carry on a daily basis, then it's probably worth looking into. All right, next we're gonna move into, for me, it was the kel -Tec. Uh And one of the things I liked about this gun when I purchased this gun, the P11, is it was a smaller form factor with a double stack magazine. And you, so you could get a decent amount. Now, things have moved along really since this gun has come out and you can get better guns in this form factor. Uh, but again, it's got a relatively short barrel. It's not gonna be extremely accurate over distance. Here we have the Taurus G2C. Uh, I like this gun, it shoots really well, and the G3C even has a better trigger than this one, but this is the one I have on hand right now. Uh, it is a really good gun, and it's kind of made in that Glock 26 kind of uh, realm. Uh, it's, it's a good one, it shoots really well. Here we have the Smith & Wesson 9mm Shield. I really like this gun. It shoots really well. It's very reliable um, and it does everything that I expect out of a gun of this size. And it's kind of playing in that Glock 43 space. I've really enjoyed shooting it and it, it's just, it's, it, it's a fairly comfortable gun to carry. Uh, and then we move up to this one. This is not 
a concealed carry gun for most people. That is the full size Glock 17. Now, I enjoy this gun, it shoots really well, but this is where we are gonna now start looking back across everything. And while I say that I think what you need to do is pick a brand and a line and stick into that. So the deal with each one of these, and, and all of these guns are completely unloaded, the magazines are out, but each one of these, they have their own feel, like I said at the beginning of the video. Now you need to start out by doing some research. When you are looking to purchase your first gun, do some research and decide on a brand and a line that you like. And the reason I say that is this, if you pick up any of these guns and you start from a concealed position and you practice drawing your gun from a concealed position and coming out to target, what you will find is as you change from one gun to the next, just with this part, you're gonna be maybe tipping a little different. See, the grip angle on a lot of these guns are slightly different. The Glock is at about 22 degrees, whereas the Smith & Wesson M&P line is about 18 degrees. And it doesn't sound like much. And when you look at them, it doesn't look like much. But when you practice drawing with one and coming up and being on target over and over again, you'll notice when you switch to the next one, it's off. And it might be up a little bit, might be down a little bit, depending on which way you're switching. But what you're wanting to do is you want a consistent draw stroke. So if you're ever having to use a gun in self-defense, you don't have to think about that a tremendous amount. Next is the trigger. You'll notice that across a line, most of the triggers in that line will be at least similar enough that it's not gonna throw off your shooting. So we look at the shield here. Okay, on a trigger pull, we'll talk about trigger pull. You have this hinge system with your trigger. You pull it back and you find the wall and then you pull the trigger. But now you move to the Taurus suddenly and also a very good gun. It is a cheaper gun as far as your price, but it seems to be very good quality. But here, when you're pushing the trigger, you're gonna go back a lot further before you get to that wall, before you pull the trigger. So as you're finding that area, that is a completely different trigger pull. So again, if I move from the shield here to maybe a you know, nine millimeter compact MMP, uh, it's gonna have a very similar trigger pull. So I, that is gonna have a similar feel. The grip angle is gonna be very similar. All of my skills will translate from the shield MMP to the slightly larger MMP subcompact nine or even the MMP nine. Um, as I am working that, that, that is what I'm looking for. I want that nice kind of movement from one to the next where it's not going to completely throw me off in a real situation. The next thing you have to think about with this is not what's cool, but we do need to think about the popularity to an extent. And it's not that I want to be the cool guy on the range. Basically what we're talking about is I want it to be popular enough that I can buy the accessories that I'm looking for. And wait a second, don't think I'm talking about being all tactical. I'm talking about I want a decent holster for my gun. I want to be able to purchase the things that I'm gonna need for that particular gun. And if it's hard to either buy parts or accessories for the gun, then it might not be the best purchase for me. So no matter what you are starting with, sit down, take a look at the different lines and then start working within that line. So if you want a smaller pocket type gun, well, if I'm interested in say Taurus, well, they have a TCP that is similar to the Ruger LCP. It's a, it's a smaller gun. It is also a good gun, okay? And then maybe you want something up from there, but not quite what the G2C is. Well, there's the G2S or the G3S, okay? And then maybe you want that or maybe larger. Well, then you have the G3 or the G2 that holds 15 rounds, okay? So that, that works the same across all these different lines. So we can do the same thing with the Smith & Wesson, where we take the Smith & Wesson, and it looks like we have the Smith & Wesson bodyguard, and that would be your pocket gun. Okay, we have the Smith & Wesson shield. Okay, we move up, we have the Smith & Wesson subcompact nine, and the compact M&P nine, and then the full M&P nine. Uh, Glock has the Glock 42, the Glock 43, okay, the Glock 26, 
and then the Glock 19 and the Glock 17 and lots more, okay? But what I'm getting at is if you will pick a system, a weapon system that you can work within, that is actually gonna help you a lot because there is a nice consistency across the board with everything. Now, all of this to say this, it's your choice. You need to decide what you are gonna do. These different guns have different budgets. Understand that I'm looking at everything from a self-defense perspective, okay? I'm not interested in gun collecting. These are not all of my guns, okay? I don't own all of these. Um, what I want is I want a decent weapon system that I know that I can count on. So for me, it needs to have good reliability, okay? It also needs to have good variety within the system just in case I need to do something either larger or smaller. It also needs to be something that I can get the holsters or any other accessories that I might need for that gun. And then I'm looking into what is gonna fit my budget. So where is everything gonna be in the budget? And then I'm gonna move from there. Also, never think that you need to buy everything that you're going to want all at once. You can grow into these things, but if you will take the time and do some research before you get started, it's going to help you out tremendously. Guys, I thank you very much for watching the video. I hope this has helped you. Uh, I, I really wish for me that somebody would have laid this all out for me uh, when I was starting to get into pistols and concealed carry. Uh, so I thought, well, if that's something that I wish that I'd had, then why not make this for somebody else? So try to make sure, if you're thinking about self-defense, weapon system first. What kind of weapon system? Make sure it's good reliability. Okay, make sure they have good variety, make sure they're popular enough that you can buy the accessories that you're going to need. Okay, and then you are gonna fall into your budget. Guys, again, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.